every man should follow these three rules that I'm going to set out for you guys. And the reason why is because three golden rules will allow you to learn to get to know people for who they really are, not their appearance. And the reason why is because a man with a full dick who wants to bang a woman and a woman with some smarts, they'll learn to play up certain roles that will cause you to get manipulated, that will cause you to chase unnecessarily, that will cause you a lot of frustration, a lot of waste of money, because all because you can't see through her. All because you cannot see through the cloud of smoke that she's throwing at you and manipulating you on the side. Especially for guys who are naive. Especially for guys who are led by their dicks. To learn to see reality. To see the person who you, who's in front of you rather than seeing a projection. And to understand how to, the right and proper way to create and maintain a connection and i'm explain these three golden rules and how to apply it and how you might be breaking it in very very deep detail first things first all right um learn the first rule is not judging things by appearances right learning not to judge appearances never trust what you see with your eye always focus on people's actions all right rather than their words and learn not to categorize people that you meet instantly, right? Why? Because learning to focus on actions and not words, you're learning to pretty much judge people's behavior rather than the words that they say, right? Because by naturally, humans wanna, humans have a natural fear of death, all right? And one of the ways that humans deal with the fear of death is by not updating the way people change over time, by keeping a stagnant, a stagnant um, view of time where you don't update them, right? And you don't, and you don't pay attention to people to how people's character changes over time. That's a way to almost like stop time itself. Um, so what you want to do is. Don't look at people's charity, how they don't don't look at people's words and public acts that are deemed positive, right? Because public acts, anything that's done in the social realm, is pretty much for appearances for the most part. You want to focus more on the negative acts and how negative they and how negative they are, because that says more about the person. The good things that people do in public really shouldn't be used to judge them. What you should use, use to judge people is the severity of the negative things that they do because those things they can't control. So that says a lot more about their character than the positive things that they say, right? And also, don't let a person's innocence fool you into letting your guard down, okay? Um, especially when you first meet people. Just because somebody looks 100% perfect and harmless doesn't mean that they are, all right? Because a lot of narcissists cloak themselves in sheep's clothing when in reality deep down they're wolves right um because and, and the way that they cloak themselves with innocence is through words right because words are pretty much dusting your eyes to divert you from their behavior um the more a man says how good he is the more a man talks about his good traits the more you should look into to verify those acts to to verify what he's saying with actions Always follow through with people who you initially meet, like a job that cause that cause the references you give them. So, so things that you could do is just look at their social media, right? Find out people who who hate them. Find out exes who they had a bad breakup with, and ask them about them. Especially the people who they have a problem with, right? Um, so that's one thing, right? Is 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 not is learning not to judge appearances. Um, so other ways to look through the appearances that they give you is by you showing weakness, right? Showing weakness and seeing how they react. You could talk about how um, something bad happened to you. Like maybe you're somebody that was abused as an example, right? Or it could be that you let him um, get away with some things at first, right? Let him be late on the date and you don't call him out. Does he do it again? Right. Um, 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 text him fast and see how does he react to your quick text to you responding fast. Does does the fact that you're responding fast cause him to respond slower? Right. Show eagerness to see him and see how does he react to your eagerness. Right. Does he all of a sudden start acting cocky, start pulling away, start taking your 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 kindness for weakness. Right. That's a way to reveal 
the aggressive part of his personality because weakness pretty much brings out aggression in people. Because when somebody sees your weaknesses and how they do, how they deal with your weaknesses says a lot about them. For example, let's just say you reveal something that's weak of yours, right? And then a week later, he comes back and uses it against you in an argument. Boom, now you saw the person, you saw it the side of his character. Why? Because naturally humans, a, a human's aggressive side comes out when there's weakness in front of them and they know they're not going to get caught. That's when the mask slips off and they reveal their real side, right? But if they see your weakness and they don't, and they never use it against you, that's a sign of their character. Other things that you could do to, to look through the appearances is irritate them to see how they react to those moments. Challenge their belief systems. Have an argument to see how they argue. Disagree with them. Make a joke at, at their expense and see how prickly they are. Right? All of those things will reveal their character. Be unpredictable. By you being unpredictable naturally makes them... Um, it makes uncontrollable emotions come out. Randomly canceling a date. Are they vindictive? Do they randomly cancel a date after you cancel a date? This will tell you part to their character. Right? And like I said earlier, look into their past. If they talk about how, if they keep talking bad about their exes, find out. Right? And also, if they really talk bad about their exes, that's a sign of their character. If they have no friends, find out why they have no friends. Right? Find out why they keep getting fired. Right? All of those things reveal their character. Ask their enemies about them, okay? So what you want to do is not focus on his words, but focus on his action. Also, since humans naturally judge appearances, because we are human animals and human animals are, it's too stressful to have to look into everything. It's too stressful to have to verify everything, to have to question everything that you see. We wouldn't be able to function, so we naturally have an automatic categorizing system and schema in our minds to save energy. And as a result, we are very susceptible to appearances. We are very susceptible to illusions, right? So what you wanna do is use it to your advantage. Right. Learn to learn to hide certain parts of your personality to people and reveal that part over time. Right. Learn to hide certain weaknesses at first. Right. That, that and reveal it over time. Learn to hide some positive traits about you and reveal it over time. When you reveal everything too quick, it, 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 it says insecurity. When you reveal things over time, it actually gives you more red depth, more roundness, more depthness as a person. And it's actually a lot more attractive if they find the best things about you a little later on in the relationship. By the way, if you guys ever want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you guys could click on the description down below where it says work with me one-on-one. -on -one, and you guys can see all of the coaching options that I have with you where you guys can talk to me individually about your dating issues let's continue so that's one thing don't judge appearances um learn to if he looks like a perfect guy step back if he if he if he reminds you of somebody in your past step back right you're pretty much projecting so take a step back and speak of that speaking of projecting the next thing we want to do is don't let your emotions control how you see a person Emotions guide us through our decision making, not our intellect. That's why some people don't know how they made friends. If you ask them, how did you make friends? They'll tell you, I just made friends. Or how they achieved something. It was an emotional compulsion. It wasn't a rational thing. Each emotion causes us to be ready to act based on the general gist of the situation. For example, fear, right? The emotion of fear. Let's say you're walking down the street and a friend randomly scares you. The fear response will create a reflexive action where you possibly could hit them, right? That fear response causes that reflex of hitting, right? And if, and so what happens is that automatically you hit them. Fear naturally causes a flood of blood in the arms and hands, right? In order to hit something to defend yourself. Why? Because over years of evolution and people who survived, that action of hitting something that makes you scared instantly has led to survival, right? So it, it has created a deep, deep neural network in the brain through, through natural selection so that everyone who is alive does that kind of movement, right? Not everyone, but most people. 
right um it helped it maybe some animals when they see for example another example is some animals when they see certain foods when they see a food the the reflex respond is to automatically open its mouth and eat right it's like an automatic response right so so you you put something in the mouth of an alligator an alligator is not going to say oh i'm ooh, time to eat no it's more like like an automatic response right um at the thought of maybe eating something so we have those automatic responses based on certain emotional states right so to humans we we want we we want to be able to not have that automatic response because we are we have transcended that because of our because of our, our um, neocortex we have now a middleman between the limbic system right and our awareness of the emotional response and that and that middleman is pretty much the last part of your brain that developed right and that's the rational part of your brain our encounters socially are not shaped by our rational thought of them they're really not but more on our emotional circuitry and um, now, so 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 our the way that we respond to people are based on what we have experienced in life, and also based on what our ancestors have passed on to us. And those ancestors and, and our ancestors are pretty much responsible for those automatic responses based on emotions. So we are pretty much, as a result, um, prone to be deceived by appearances. Right? We don't really. A lot of times, we don't make. We don't think about our judgment. We just we just see something, feel, and automatically perceive them based on the emotion, right? We don't really change. We have no control over the, most people how they perceive the world. Why? Because emotions are impulses to act based on what life throws at us. They're just impulses. Emotions come from the Latin word to move. In animal and children, you tend to see those emotions more, more more clearly. But in more civilized society, you tend to see it more passive aggressively. And, and the reason why is because we as humans have two different minds, right? The emotional mind and the rational mind. The emotional mind is stronger because our emotions and, and intuitions guide us as we eat or um, um, what as to what to eat, where to go, what friends to make. Almost similar to when you were a child, you weren't aware of that. All right? They use emotions back then for inspiration and rational thought to guide those inspirations, right? So if your mind is consistently reactive, Consistently reacting to what's in front of you, right? And, and not having any space to step back and say, oh, I'm making a quick judgment based on, based on my insecurities, based on my past, right? Your strategies will be out of tune with the problems you're targeting because you're possibly stuck in the past, seeing projections, having unfulfilled needs and trying to use the person in front of you to fulfill those needs. And as a result, you pretty much change the way, you pretty much are not seeing reality eyeball to eyeball. You're just seeing it through a projection, right? So what you, so, so when you meet somebody and you judge them based on your insecurities and they end up not being the person who you think they are, those kind of setbacks will pretty much destroy you from within you know so when setback happens you you pretty much want to learn to improvise based on the resources and your long-term goals right don't improvise reactively if some if if, if 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 somebody doesn't like you if somebody doesn't appear based on who they are don't just react with anger with frustration with 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 resentment towards people right Learn to take a step back and say to yourself, how, how did I misinterpret the situation? How did I not see who this person was? What were the first signs that showed me who they really were from the beginning? Because this is going to take a lot and take, take making mistakes in order to, to, to almost to reshape the apertures of how you see people and get a clearer picture. Right? You got to get through the gunk. You got to get through the projections. You got to get through all of those cloudy smokes that's pretty much fogging reality. All right, and, and and the way that you do that is, is by not allowing the setbacks to stop you, right? And understanding that you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna misinterpret people, you're gonna let your emotions cloud um, what you see. But what? But in that moment of making those mistakes, right? If you if if you don't adjust you, if you don't adjust um, when you make mistakes and not and not cry and complain, right? Your setbacks will de will deter you if you if, if you if you allow it to to do that to you setbacks have a tendency to force us 
to learn new skills based on the limited resources that we have. Usually these skills are very important to the work. And when things go wrong, when you when you when you get played, when somebody um, when when somebody hurts you, when somebody dumps you, when when a guy that or or a girl that you're meeting completely disappoints you and you misinterpret her, right? It is that moment that you then you analyze your mistakes so that you could prepare for the next person that you meet. And the next person that you meet, your eyes will be more open. You're going to be aware and attuned of certain patterns of deception a little bit better. And the more people that you meet, the more you keep your eyes open, the more you, the less you project, the clearer picture that you have of the person and the easier it is for you to make a decision about whether or not this person is, is right for you, right? So what you want to do is let go of the past. And when I say let go of the past, I mean stop looking for a certain person in other people. Stop trying to fulfill a certain need you didn't fulfill as a kid through a certain person. And a lot of times we're not aware of that, right? So let go of the past and learn and be more realistic about your expectations. Lower your expectations with people. Because the expectations that you have a lot of times cloud your thinking. Lower your expectations, the more clear a picture that you get of this person that you're seeing. And and, and by having low expectation, you're pretty much... You're pretty much aligning yourself with reality, because a lot of the th- a lot of times the things that you're trying to work won't work out. Most often than not, the person who you're trying to get will not be will not be the person for you. That that's just how life is, right? But if you live in a little fantasy, in a little fantasy world where 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 it's all sunshine and rainbows, right? You could easy you could easily lie to yourself that things that life is a fairy tale. And when you believe that, you're gonna project a bunch of things into the world, where you're under, where you'll only end up um, attracting narcissistic people who are ready to tell you the lies you want to believe. But when you have realistic expectations, what you'll notice is that they lower. You don't expect things to work out, not out of trauma, but but, but because of, but out of rational thinking, right? When you go on a date with somebody, you you pretty much say, okay, he might not call me back. Not because you're, you're, you're tired of dating, but because you just know that most things don't work out. And, 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 and then you're able to see people a little bit more clearer. Because most things don't work out. And, 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 you, and you learn to be, them to see patterns. right? You, you, you'll be able to see patterns more quickly. If, like, for example, you realize that people never do things just once. If a, guy, if a guy or girl cancels a date one time, they'll cancel it again. If somebody breaks up with you one time, there's most likely they're gonna break up with you again. If somebody if if somebody um, cheats on you once, most likely he'll cheat on you again, and most likely you will sort of want to get revenge and cheat on him too, right? These are things about these are patterns that if you're seeing what you want to see, you will never see, right? You want to you just want to learn to stop seeing the world through through um, um, through a fog of emotion. And the last rule is put your purpose over women and over everybody particularly over women and the reason why that is is because first of all it'll give her competition women like competition women like women like to feel that there's something tugging your attention that's not them so that they can feel attractive by pulling you away from that thing that you love and it's, it, it's, it's similar to just putting her in a sexually competitive state with your purpose in life. And we've seen that in, in, and this usually works best when you're first getting to know the person, right? Because over long, over time, if you keep your woman second, right, if they, if they feel like you don't, fu- you don't fully love them, it, it causes conflict. But initially in the beginning, when you guys are just dating, you want her to feel that she's not your number one priority because it offends them. It hurts their ego. And it makes them chase, right? Um, other things that other things that purpose does is that it insulates you against the bullshit and against their inconsistency, right? Because this is the thing: the more you care about getting women, the less you'll get. Because they're gonna smell your needy energy. They're gonna smell it. Women are not dumb. They can see that type of stuff. Right? From a mile away, they know how to smell neediness. In fact, even more, women literally smell with more intensity than men do. Like they can literally smell more things, right? And they can handle more pain, right? But the point is that by having a purpose in life, it insulates you. 
it gives you protection against BS. It gives you protection against women canceling and being unpredictable. It gives you something that you could predict, essentially. Right, and it also heals you. It removes the neediness. If it, the more, the deeper you get, it, it becomes your own source of positive emotions, where your purpose will literally feed you life. Whenever there's bullshit that women throw at you, but the whole point of purpose is just, just pretty much deep. Is to the point is to deprioritize women, to make to to take them from your number one priority to your third or fourth priority this is the thing guys your dicks are not your friend your dick is not your friend all right your dick will make women more important to you than they should be and it'll and, and to the point that some guys will even become sex addicts to the point that some guys just cannot even function without getting validation from a woman that's not good that does not show any self-mastery. That doesn't show that you can control yourself. Women will see that and they'll find that unattractive. So what you want to do is have control all over your dick. By one, having a purpose in life. Being present in the moment. All right? If you, if you develop those two things, they're not going to have any power over you. Because by you letting, by you letting your dick control you, it's pretty much causing about the last point where you have no, you, you cannot see reality. You're seeing women through your dick's eye and your dick will make them look like angels. But you having a purpose, you begin to see the world through the eyes of your purpose. You begin to see the world through your higher self. And as a result, you see women for who they are. Not from their titties or ass. You're going to see them for who they are as a person. Right? Because when you get to know them, you just pretty much know as that they're just normal people. They eat, they shit, they sleep, they throw up, they do everything that a person does. Right? But when your dick, for some reason, doesn't see them for who they are. They see them, they, they, they see them as these angelic beings. And you want to remove that projection as, as much as possible. But also, most importantly, by developing a sense of purpose, you're really going to find the happiness you're looking for in women. Because that's a fact. They will never give you the happiness you really are looking for. I can promise you that. So, look, if you guys ever want to work with me one on one, click on the description down below, below where it says work with me one on one. I have boot camps for guys where if you guys want to learn, the, the, um, if you guys want to learn how to approach people, how to get their numbers, how to do same day lays, I can teach you how to do that in one in the weekend, right? And I also have uh, monthly coaching where you hit with this something called Coach in a Pocket where you could have access to me 100% for a whole month. I respond to you through text messages and I'll give you, and if you're going through an issue, you need constant like responses, that's the program for you. All right? Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. So if you're a guy that's just like me who considers himself a nice guy and you in your whole life you've been getting played by women, this is the course for you. Remember, I was a Bible teacher for most of, for most of my life as a teenager. So I was I was the I was the the quintessential nice guy. So this course that I created is specifically made to bring out your assertive nature because when you're a nice guy, your assertiveness is suppressed. So by learning, by watching this course, you're pretty much going to learn not to get played. Now, mind you, you're not going to turn into a white guy into a black guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's not going to happen because you see a white guy and then you see a big old black guy named Tyrone. That's not going to happen. What's going to happen is that you're going to learn how to assert yourself in a respectful and healthy way. You're going to learn how to express yourself. You're going to learn how to demand respect from men and women. And what's going to happen at the end of this course is that men will respect you and women will bang you for the most part. Okay, so you're gonna, and, and the beauty about this is, is that there's a 30 day money back guarantee. 30 days, so if you don't like it, just message me and I'll give you your 30, and I'll give you all of your money back and you can keep the course. So, what you can, you can learn about the source of human aggression, strategies on self assertion, how to identify different types of disrespects, right? How to deter aggression, signs of weakness that you might be sending out that's causing people to disrespect you, right? You're gonna learn how to attack some people and who not to attack. It's pretty much gonna make you more socially intelligent. It's a course for anybody who struggles with assertion and specifically with people who've been jaded by being played by people, okay? So if you wanna purchase this course, 
Go to the description down below and where it says purchase nice guy and do it now. 30 day money back guarantee. No questions asked. And you keep the course. God damn it. Okay. Because I am that nice, nice of a guy. Ironically. Okay. So I'll see you guys inside. And I hope you guys enjoyed this course. I put a lot of my heart in it. And I'll see you guys inside. Purchase it now. Take care. Stay toxic.